Welcome to the tutorial Drawing with the Brush Tool. To select the Brush Tool, you can click on its icon in the Tools toolbar or use the keyboard shortcut Option B for Mac or Alt B for Windows. In the Tools Property panel of the Brush Tool, you can select from a range of preset brushes that have different minimum and maximum values for the brush size, smoothness, contour optimization, and brush tip. If you'd like to create a customized brush, you can click on the plus pencil icon here and a brush will be created, brush 7 in this case, using the properties of the brush that was selected at the time of its creation and in this case it was brush 5. Then you can rename your brush by clicking on the A icon here. I'm going to call my, my brush my brush. And then I'm just going to create a new layer that I can fool around on. Obviously by changing the minimum and maximum values, you change the overall width of the brush that you can preview here. You also have the ability to um, hide the preview of the stroke. But it also um, changes the ability of the brush to taper. So here, we can get a very strong taper, a very tiny, thin, sharp point to a thicker, wider area. Then if we give the contour optimization a value of zero and draw a squiggly line, you can see that it's very faithful for, to what I intended to draw. If we then give the contour optimization a value, 10 being quite large, and draw a similar line, I don't know if you noticed this, but there was sort of a movement of the pixels around the stroke. And what was going on there is that the software was trying to reduce the number of vector points around the contour to optimize it by making it lighter. Then if we give the smoothness a value and draw a similar line, you might have noticed a greater movement. And what was going on there is that the software was taking its central vector line, which you can't see or manipulate, and sort of making an average to smooth out the stroke. The last option that you can um, be creative with is the brush tip. Um, and here you have several brush tips. If you choose one like this, you can get some nice calligraphy action going on. If you choose the square tip, you can get something very, you know, very mechanical. Um, and then maybe this one at the bottom, you can get a sort of a feeling of hair. So, you know, there's lots of um, ways to be creative with the brush tips. Then if you decide you'd like to get rid of this brush, it's cluttering up your list, or you might have created too many brushes, you just have to select it from the list and click on this minus pencil sign here, and that'll remove that custom brush from your brush list. So I'm just going to delete this altogether. So now let's get on to the fun part of the tutorial. On this rapid sketch layer here, I've drawn the front and profile views of a cartoon rabbit. And what I'm going to attempt to do is draw its three quarter view in between the two views um, using the front and profile as guides. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the light table and the grid. And then I'm going to select brush here. And on this drawing, this new drawing layer, I'm going to draw a bunch of lines that are going to demarcate um, points that I think are important as measurements along the length of the rabbit. You'll see what I mean when I start, but basically it'll be like the top of the head, uh, the center of the eyes, the bottom of the chin, things like that, so that when I go to the profile view where it's blank, I'll be able to see where the, the most important points are on this rabbit. And I actually did this already um, for the profile view. I, I took the most important points in the front view, but I'm doing it again just to show you uh, the process. So let's, let's click on the drawing view and we see that this becomes sort of washed out. I'm going to use uh, Option Command to rotate my table, zoom in, do whatever I need to do to get comfortable. And then here I'm going to draw a line for the top of the head, the bottom of the chin, center of the eyes, uh, let's say top of the ear, top of this ear because they're not the same. The 
bottom of the jacket, the hands, say the tops of the feet here. Uh, and then I'm going to extend this. So let's extend exposure or use the keyboard shortcut F5. So now I can also see the same uh, lines in the profile view just to make sure. So here the ears are a bit weird uh, because we have those different size ears. Lines up with the top of the ears. Yeah, okay, the hands are maybe a little bit off there as are the feet, so maybe I'll raise this line a bit. Okay, so that gives me basically where all the most important points are. I'm going to press shift M to recenter, and I'm actually going to call this layer guide, and I'm just going to bring it down underneath. And when I go to the center here, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut uh, option command O to bring up the onion skinning. So now it's showing me the uh, front view in red and the profile view in green. Some people kind of find this confusing and messy to look at. Um, I'm okay with it, but use whatever you think you you need to do to get comfortable. Um, and as I, as I mentioned before, you can do this in the camera view as well. You can get those lines with the light tabling, the grid, and the onion skinning just as you can with the drawing view. So once again, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Then I'm going to uh, use this blue sketch line that I made earlier at, to sketch the lines of this rabbit. So I'm going to speed up the video at this point to uh, twice the normal speed just so you can see me draw the rabbit quickly. And what I'm trying to do here is really hit the lines for the most part in between the red and the green, so in between the front and the side perspective. Um, sometimes I'm going to take lines from directly from the, the profile view, and sometimes I'm going to take lines directly from the front view. Um, but you know, you have to really decide for yourself which parts of the rabbit need to be elongated or foreshortened on your own judgment. Um, this eye here, despite the fact that I drew the, the guideline pretty badly, um, is not in between the green and the red. It's actually the farthest out to the left it can be because in the three-quarter perspective, your eye almost looks like it's being cut off by the side of your face. Um, the ears are also another difficult uh, part of the body to draw for the rabbit because um, there's so many different planes for the rabbit ears. Um, it falls on different planes, so it's hard to draw it exactly between the green and the uh, the red, but the nice thing about the human eye is it'll usually accept the fact that these rabbit ears flop around when you draw them and uh, accept most shapes in the three-quarter view, that transition view. Um, you know, for the second year I didn't really draw something in between, but you know, you can you can take a stylistic stance instead of making it exactly in between the red and the green, you can have it in a very specific position. Like I said, the eye will accept so here I'm taking some lines directly from the profile view, but you know I'm showing a little bit more of the left collar that's peeking out, part of the left side, the left arm that you couldn't see exactly in the profile view, um, and I'm imagining where it would be from the front view. The tail as well is one of those good uh, body parts that rests right between profile and front view. Uh, once again, the tail probably from the front view shouldn't be visible, but stylistically I had it peeking up from the side. Same for this foot. In traditional three-quarter view, it would probably be facing um, the other direction. It would be pointing sort of uh, in the same direction as the left foot. Um, but stylistically, I'm going to have his legs kind of bow-legged so that he's standing with them both sort of open. I'm just going to disable the light table and the onion skin. And now I'm going to show you a feature that exists in the tool properties panel of the brush tool. But first I'm just going to create uh, two swatches really quickly. The 
first is going to be a fairly dark line, which I'll call dark lines. Uh, I'll go to more. This will be slightly lighter. Uh, we'll call this shading. Okay. I'm going to select all my lines. Press uh, Command A as well. Maybe just double check. Uh, and I'm going to make these dark. So now these are dark lines. Actually, I'm going to take off the grid as well. So what I want to show you is that when you do quick line tests, it's often nice to put some shading into your sketchy pencil lines to make it more obvious, um, like where the different planes are in the face and in the you know the clothing of your character, um, as well as you know some elements in the background. So in the brush, uh, brushes tool properties panel, you're always by default in the normal brush mode. And with this mode on, the brush behaves like you would expect it to behave in pretty much any uh, drawing program. But the moment that you turn this one on, which is called draw behind, now your strokes, instead of being drawn one on top of the other, you know, so it's very, it's very normal for you to be able to draw a stroke and the next stroke over it would lie on top. Um, what we're going to do is it's the lines are going to be placed beneath lines that already exist in your drawing space. So let me let me just show you what I mean. So I'm going to do this in a pretty messy way, but use this a bit. This is supposed to be is meant to be quick and sketchy. So don't worry too much about precision here. Maybe a little bit of exaggeration of depth, just so it sort of stands out, uh, you know, when you're doing some type of a line test. Uh, and you can even, you know, go in and I think I'm going to make it a bit darker or a bit less transparent. And let's make this a bit darker too. So as you can see, as we zoom in, all the shading that was done second was placed behind the dark lines that were drawn first by the software. So just to make it a bit more clear, now we're in normal brush mode. Let's make that a bit more opaque. The line sits on top of the black line. Draw behind, it sits behind. So that's it for the Drawing with the Brush 2 tutorial. Stay tuned for the next Drawing with Line Texture tutorial.